Hi guys, welcome to Gardening for Fun and Profit. It's been a long time since I've had a chance to talk to you, not since my seed giveaway last uh, November. Huge success. We'll be doing that again back in November, coming up this next November. What I want to share with you today is a quick and easy way to make worm tea. I've had a couple of videos on my worm castings and worm farming. showed you how to do the buckets. I showed you what to feed them and what not to feed them. Today we're going to make worm tea and I'm actually going to mix some compost in with it so we're going to make a worm compost tea. When we do this, I've got, the, I've got a fish bubbler right here. Pretty simple, it's like $7.99 at the store. Uh, it's, uh, I got it in the pet department at uh, one of our mega stores. And I have got it weighted down with this one inch wrench. I uh, actually tilled that up in the garden probably five or six years ago. Wasn't mine, probably previous owners. Anyway, finally found a use for it. So I've been uh, been letting this bubble for about two or three hours now to get some uh, oxygen into the water. This is rainwater that uh, came out of my rain barrels. Hopefully you've seen that. It's a little bit brown in color right now because we've got a large maple tree over the garage that collects rainwater and uh, all the saplings and everything when they fall down they get in the gutters. You know how it is. You've got 8,000 maple trees growing in your gutters. Anyway, they've kind of stained the water which is fine by me. It's not going to hurt anything. It actually may be adding some nutrients to the water. I don't know. So let me get you guys up here a little bit closer and show you what's going on. Okay, here you can see the bubbling action from the fish bubbler. It's doing its job. Over on the uh, right side, by the end of the chair, you can see I've got a little small jar of molasses. We're going to add about three to four tablespoons of molasses to the mix, along with the uh, worm castings and the uh, compost, and show you how I put that in and we'll get this baby going. Alright, well I'm going to stir the molasses. We're going to go ahead and take the bubbler out. Like I say, we just put in eh, two, three, four tablespoons and this will give the microbes that are in the compost and in, in the worm castings, this will give them something to munch on. And I should say that uh, normally I also add a little bit of dried kelp, but where I buy the kelp out at the gardening center. I'm out and they're closed today. You'll see the uh, bubbling action not only from the fish bubbler but from the microbes eating the molasses and, and doing their magic and uh, when you're adding fertilizer like this to your plants you're not really adding the fertilizer to the plants. You're adding it to the soil and that is the most important key in gardening, a healthy soil. If you do not have a healthy soil you are not going to have healthy plants. Yes, your plants are going to benefit from this, but this will also add very important microbes and good bacteria back into the soil that will thrive. And as long as your plants are, uh, I'm sorry, as long as your soil is healthy, your plants are going to be healthy as well, and you will see a difference. Now, if you don't raise uh, worms like I do, you can use uh, compost. You can use any kind of manure if you know somebody. If you've got a farm yourself, you probably already know what I'm telling you. But if not, you can probably find somebody that's got uh, cow, pig, horse, chicken, chicken, sheep, goat, you name it. That manure is great to use. Just let it age for a little bit in case it's a little hot so it won't burn your plants. Anyway, I'm going to uh, stir the molasses and then we'll get the... Uh, compost and the worm castings in the bag and get it started. Alright, we got the molasses mixed in. This is the bag I use to put our castings and compost in. This is a breathable bag. This is actually what the worms came in when I ordered them a couple years ago and started my vermicomposting. So, about, about two, two handfuls 
of uh, compost. Same thing with the uh, worm castings. Yeah, I know a little bit's falling out, but that's okay. It won't hurt anything. Then we're just going to turn this baby inside out. Wrap it up. We're actually going to weight it down with the same wrench for the bubbler. It'll take it about an hour or so for it to fully get the uh, bag entirely wet. I'm going to hook it right there inside the handle. And as you can see, yes, I have got some worm castings on me. No smell whatsoever. I'll just go rinse them over in a five gallon bucket and then I'll pour that water on the on the soil. Now I let mine go for about 24 hours but I will caution you to get the full benefits of the microbes back in the soil you need to use this as soon as possible. You cannot store this. The longer you wait after you quit bubbling the less active the microbes are. Get out of here. The less active the microbes are so I do it in five gallon batches and I usually do one every every day. I've only got one bubbler. I'm probably going to go buy a couple more since they're only like eight bucks. And uh, that way I can get a continuous cycle. Even if my plants don't need watered, I'm still uh, watering parts of the soil and the garden. So anyway, there you have it. Dirty hands and all. Thanks for watching. Gardening for Fun and Profit, check me out on Facebook, check me out on YouTube if you like what you see, subscribe to me on YouTube, like us on Facebook, we try to get a video out every two weeks or so. I've actually got two more videos that I've got taped, filmed, need to get them edited, uh, had some issues with my PC, adware, finally got that fixed, so uh, hopefully I'll get those out to you in the next week, maybe, maybe two. So anyway, thanks for watching me. Have a good day and keep growing strong.